Welcome to Relocating to Disney. Now, if you've watched this channel for a while, you know that I put on permanent Christmas lights on the Florida house. And I'll link in the description the video for that. And these are not just Christmas lights, but they're year round lights. And I run them during the various holidays. Now, about seven or eight months after I installed them, we had a lightning strike because Florida, as some people say, is the lightning capital of the world. We had a Florida strike near the house. It zapped out all of the LEDs and the controller boards, even though they were not plugged into the electricity. I had to replace everything. And this time around, I ran the uh, feeder cables a little bit differently than I did the first time. The first time I used a bucket truck to get up there above the tree, right? A cherry picker. Um, and that was kind of an expensive rental. So I didn't want to do that again. So I said, well, this time I'll just skip that, unfortunately. And so I ran the um, wire differently. Let's see, I came out of the garage, across here, up, up, and then that way. And by running it this way, I added, I don't know, probably another 30, 40 feet to the run. And that was just too far for the data signal to go. So to fix that problem, I'm going to install a data booster. And I'm not gonna just install the data booster for this one. I'm gonna install it for the one that goes across the porch too. Because sometimes when I get into complex designs, the data signal suffers on that front porch. All right, these are the data boosters. I'll take them out of the wrapper here in just a minute so you can see them a little bit better. But these are installed uh, in line between your uh, controller and the lights. So you go from the power supply to the controller to the lights, and the distance between the controller and the lights is too great, so you put in a data booster. Now that means the data booster is going to be outside in the weather, and it's going to get wet. So I need a waterproof box, and that's what this is, waterproof. At least it's waterproof right now. I have to drill some holes into it so I can get the cables in it. But you can see inside of here, right? I'll be able to put those data boosters in. This box is plenty big enough to hold my two little data boosters. I wanted to get something that was big enough where I could manipulate the wires and wiring inside without needing tiny little fingers. Because I do not have tiny little fingers. So first thing we've got to do, drill some holes in here so I can get the cable through the box. So first up is just some pilot holes with a small drill bit, and then we'll get the bigger drill bit out so that we can fish the cable through. Okay, now we got the pilot hole done. We're gonna go in with a 5 8 to make that hole big enough for our cable and the cable sleeve to go through. So this is the cable sleeve that my box came with. I'm gonna try to show this to you one-handed. So this just goes into the hole, right? And I'm just gonna screw in. And then on the other side, this, there's also a rubber washer, goes and the end result looks like this. And then you put the cap on it, it looks like that. Now the way these work is the tighter you screw them on, the smaller that this hole gets. So it'll just clamp right around the cable, whatever size you might have. So that'll help keep it watertight. This is the inline data booster. All right, and on the back side, they've done a really good job of showing, let's see if I can get that to zoom to focus in, right? You can see the data in, data out, which one's gonna be the ground. And so you should, should be able to wire this up pretty good. Now this was about five bucks at uh, Dr. V's and it had uh, probably about five bucks of shipping in there. So maybe 10 bucks. And uh, since I'm fixing two of these, it's called a power injector if you look. So it's supposed to improve the power on the data Anyways, uh, I've got two of these, again, because I'm fixing two lines. So let's wire it up. As you can see here, got the wire tucked in along the siding. 
And it goes all the way down to the ground. Both wires do. And then in here under the stone, I've, I've got some extra spooled up. And I always recommend, um, you know, give yourself a little extra slack there. And the fact that I left some extra slack is what's going to save me this time because I've got to cut it and put it through the box. Yeah, so this, this just goes to some Christmas lights, but these black ones are what I'm talking about. That's what I'm going to be cutting and putting through the box. So I'm going to cut the cable. Put the screw on end on the cable and then feed the cable into the box. Next up, I'm going to strip the cable. I put ferro connectors on the end of the conductors to make it look neat. You don't have to do this, but it, it does make for a better installation. My ferro crimpers don't work, so I just do it old style. Now I insert the conductors into the board. Now it's time to do the other side. The ferro connectors are on, and now I'm going to insert these into the other side of the booster board. Next, I screw the wire caps on and turn them tight enough to form a tight seal. The first data booster is done, and now I can close up the box and seal it so it is watertight. Here's a little tip, something to pay attention to on the back, see if I can get that to focus in, is an arrow. The arrow tells the direction of the data. So where my thumb is, that's what's coming in from your ESP32 chip or whatever your controller is, uh, back by the power supply. And where my finger is, that heads off toward your LED. Make sure you wire this right or else your LEDs will not light up. Here's another tip. If you get everything wired up and the lights are still looking funny and you're using the WLED uh, app or software, try a going in and clicking skip first LED. That might just clear everything up for you. That's one done. Now I just have to repeat the process for the second one and I'm finished. My data has been boosted. Thank you for watching.